this current administration, my checks, if I stand to be quite I mean, you know, sports is not part of cabinet. And I know um, cabinet is the highest decision we can body in, in the country. And the thing that, of course, sports has been relegated to the background and they're not part of cabinet. Certain decisions will not go in favor of sport. That's why it seems we take sport in this country as leisure. Well, I, I don't even know if we take it as leisure. I think um, where you don't have a structure where rules and regulations, facilities can be provided, I'm not sure what they take it at. I'm not aware that sports is not part of cabinet. I try to keep away from that fact. But His Excellency, the President, is a smart guy. I mean, I've known him from the days he was called John rather than His Excellency. So I know he's a smart person. Maybe there's something we don't know. Maybe the portfolio of sports is handled by the minister, but there is a bigger agenda. I, I don't know. I, what I would know is that certainly if I was a minister of sports, I would be addressing the issue of sports and sports development in a different way to the previous ministers that I've seen in place. To say there is no money, then you have to really wonder and say, why do you take the job? A certain amount is budgeted every year. Are we saying what is budgeted is not applied to sports? Are we saying that we are not creative enough? Are we saying that we are actually letting down the president, perhaps? I don't know. Because, you see, if I was running sports, first and foremost, I need to secure, as in any business, how much money is really available. Not budgeted, how much money is really available. Then how do we apply it? After all, if it's football, when I ran Kotoko, I stopped every administrator from taking any bonus. They were not kicking a ball, so I took it off. I understand the winning bonuses alone for the Black Stars is more than double or triple what minority sports, all minority sports need combined. So is that being applied in the right way or not the right way? That's number one. Is there an alternative means of raising money? Because I've always felt that Ghana is nearly bankrupt anyway. You know, we go for euro bonds at a billion at a time when we spend 1.5 billion on, on uh, frozen chicken and rice importation alone. I'm, I, and I'm being facetious, but I'm just saying, I'm not sure whether this issue of borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, maybe there needs to be greater honesty. We're bankrupt. Your minister, do you have the cap capability of running the ministry and raising money? Can you rebrand sports? We had to do it in football. Even in rugby, which is a minority sport, without facilities, without proper playing to places to play, it is only now that uh, Mr. Steve Noy and Aziz and the guys running for rugby are getting greater cooperation and the use of state facilities. But there are no facilities, and yet it is for this season, I think we're probably going to get about 30% of our budget, 40% of our budget, raised and paid for by uh, Interplast. You know, Heisen Fakri is uh, fantastic, guy, and I'll mention his name everywhere I go. And we're approaching other companies as well in the private sector to help us on a very small budget to see if we can move the way forward. Maybe it is that, and it's difficult, it's not for the minority sports guys to rebrand themselves because we are doing it under the cover of the NSA. They need to, along with the ministry, look at sports as an entity and look and see how do we actually raise money, which as we know from those of us who are marketers and have done it in football, have done it with DSTV, have done it with a range of different things, with Nokia, with Motorola, before in terms of raising the profile. 101 marketing, and I think we maybe need to get hold of the people who are appointed and start 101 marketing. Did you hear that, Honorable? And then he said, yeah, take a board. We need to break it down like with children. The image of the product governs capital's willingness to attach itself to yourself. So the people who run sports, how it's put together, what the forecast is. Does business and money feel comfortable with the faces that are put forward? Do you really understand it at all? It's a, going to be a complete internal revolution from the top that will enable money to say, let's not put our money into a beauty pageant, but let us put it into, into sports and sports development. Interesting. Mr. President, we still are talking. You said you don't like those titles. Those titles, what does it mean? What does it do? Well, precisely. What does it do? It does nothing. You see, we don't seem to have a culture of humility here. 
if you have a culture of humility in public office, then it doesn't matter whether you're called president, whether you're called comrade, whether you're called brother, whether you're called general manager. Within Ghana rugby, nobody calls me president. Ask them. We don't refer to titles. You bring people who want to get involved in the running of rugby. And there are four or five fantastic people who are involved. Rianne Malan, who is not here at the moment from South Africa. We have got Mr. Steve Noy. We have Aziz. Um, there's a number of people at the, at the forefront. You've got the playing body itself who are playing bigger and bigger roles involved in rugby. That's grouper led by Ako Wilson. And he's got Sunny Marshall Norte. There's a group of people who are involved. We've got other people who are getting more involved in the game. And you are empowering them to get involved. They don't have to see me. They can see any of themselves. The decision-making process is very open. Uh, signatories to account, I make sure I don't sign any checks. As with Kotoko, I never sign, sign any checks. They can turn around and do so. You're empowering people who don't need to now stand on protocol because somebody has got a big title. If there is public humility and servitude in public office, then it doesn't matter what you're called. Why is it when somebody suddenly becomes the president of a sporting organization or president of an entity or is now called a minister or a deputy, it comes with a little smattering of polluted arrogance? Why? So if, if removing the title will bring people down to earth, then do it. You see what I'm saying? Then, then do it. I mean, is there nothing greater than meeting somebody in public office who turns around and smiles at you and refers to you in a way that you, you can see that he's a Ghanaian and you're a Ghanaian and you, you, you respect each other and you respect his position because he respects you as a Ghanaian. He serves you, you don't serve him. But how often do you see that? That you go and you see somebody carrying somebody's bag, policemen, they salute, people, they jump out of a car, they move, then they move their face squeezed up and down. Who the hell are these people? Who the hell are these people? Who the hell are these people? When they finish their four years, they go back to that where they come from. So at least when you're in public office, serve. And I think if you have servitude, we start dealing with all the problems. There are problems in development of sports, the development of nationhood, and the provision and servitude to the people who have absolutely nothing. Be their beacon of hope and put pressure on the pain that they feel every day. Because they do, huh? People in Ghana today live with a pain. And they don't care who's in power. They don't care. They're just looking for somebody who will respect that pain and tell them how, in their lifetime, they will get out of that pain. Will, will you fall in line with those who are calling that the new administration or any administration that comes to court is in charge of sports? That position, let's say the FA president, the president of rugby, you don't want the name president, but the, the one who chairs an association in sport, we are talking sport, in sport, they should advertise that position so that people who really mean business come on board. I don't think so. I think that if you look at the sporting organizations, they go through a congress of their own. Whether the congress is rigged, I don't know. I mean, it has taken how many years for Sepp Platter to be brought before the law? Most of us have always known that he was corrupt and or certain the perceptions of corruption existed. And it permeated down into African football and into our own football. And yet it is a private members club that votes for each other. You know, but since you don't want AK-47s, that's what you've got. And it's a problem. R rugby, we were not part of anything. There was an election I didn't want to be a part, persuaded, and then I was voted, I'm not sure if I'm opposed, but I was voted in to the game. And I said that for me, if I achieve what I'm doing, then I should be able to hand over rugby in three years' time or in seven years' time, knowing that there is a development taking place, there is a financial structure for continuity taking place, that you don't need a big person to fund the sport. It can be self-funding unto itself. If you've achieved those, game, those goals, then there should be younger people. I actually believe that, look, even at my age now, I believe I'm too old to be running a lot of things. And that is me who train every day. I mean, as you came, you saw I was in the gym. I do two-hour workout every day, you know. <laughs> my pulse is 50 to 52. My, my BP is 115 over 70. So I'm fit. For an old man, I'm fit. But when you have a broad, people are prime minister at 42, 45. 
somebody is a vice president of an organization at 22, 23. I'm not saying give it necessarily to the youth because we've even seen in this government that a lot of young people in public office who are failing. Quite frankly, they're failing. But they're failing because they have no life experience. They've just been plucked from university, put into places, and they've taken a pinch of their uh, youth, added arrogance, insolence to it, and are failing. But I believe the running of many organizations with guidance is something that you can give to younger people. And there's no age limit for younger people. I'm in my 50s. I feel as though I'm in my 20s. Somebody is 20s. He behaves as though he's in his 70s. So it's not an age thing. It's an application at least where you understand and respect that the majority of the population are so young. And therefore, your ideas and your application should be respect of the, major of the majority. So that is it. I don't think if we talk about football, I, I'm very hard on my brother Kwesi, but I don't want him out of the FA presidency. I think Kwesi was part of a transition period that brought him in to become president of Ghana football. But Kwesi, in my view, needs to understand his strengths, which are considerable, and his weaknesses, which are also considerable. And I think when you consider the latter, then you look at the way you run football, the domestic game. You, clearly, he's for sure he cannot run the domestic game. So give it to somebody else. Break it up as you have in other countries. And I'm not sure the PLB is the way forward. Turn around and bring professional management to run the domestic game. So you separate it from the two. The objectives are very clear in terms of changing the image, bringing investment, making sure the clubs have got adequate money. That's the way you stop corruption in football, you stop paying your referees, you improve the conditions of the players, and so on and so forth. There are many common sense things that come about when the domestic game is being run properly. And then you stay as president, go around waving to people, go to work up, do whatever you've got to do. But at least domestically, from youth level going up to third to second division, you've got the right kinds of people involved in football. They're not looking at it as a business to go and make money. And then the interest of the youth and the development of the game at lower levels is also taken up at a point that we can look at ourselves as global beings. You came to Kutu, and everywhere in the past in the history of Kutu, the word professionalism started from you. When were that impressed? You feel that uh, class in this country are professional. You feel that our league, that run, any league run in this country, you think that we are professional. I think we made pro progress. Even after I left, we made progress. And then we went flat. I think that we should be looking at various models. But every model that you look in in sports development and in football is based upon inflows of money to be able to allocate the money and therefore set the kind of rules of administration that ensure that you've got a professional league. We don't have that. And so therefore, the clubs that are involved in football most of the time, everybody is struggling to see where they can find money, where they can do this, where they can do that. And people say, well, market yourself individually. But the game itself is not being run properly. And I can say that because I understand there was a statement from the FA. I don't want to misquote who I heard it from, that they say you will have to put something in the stadium before people go to the stadium, you know, in some very peculiar way that they said it. And I don't know if the person at that point was intoxicated before he made such a statement or he didn't know the camera was on.